Hello, everyone. Welcome to Thursday edition of Take 5. Five minutes, scripture, life. <laughs> uh, this week we've been, here's the phrase that I've been telling you over and over again, not from my mind, but from God's. God is for you. God is for you. Not because you're good looking or because he loves you, because he he sent his son to die for you because he has invited you into his family. God is for you. And that's Romans 8. We've been looking at that all week. And I don't know if you've been doing it, but if you haven't, maybe start. Go and read Romans chapter 8. It's, it's one of my favorite chapters in all of the Bible. Maybe read the whole thing in one sitting at first and then, then go back and read it just verse by verse by verse. I, I've divided it up and most people do it. First 17 verses no condemnation. Really? Yeah, wow. Then from verse 18 to 30, um, glorious future. All things work together for that future, which is being conformed to the image of Christ, 18 through 30. And then 31 to the end of the chapter um, is all about God is so for you that nothing will separate you from the love of God that is in Christ. Nothing will separate you. Uh, sometimes theologically we talk about uh, different doctrines, including eternal security. Do you believe it? People ask me. Um, yeah, not because I'm so good or so strong that I stay secure, but because God is so good and so loving. And he taught it over and over and over again. Um, Jesus told his followers that uh, you are in my father's hand and no one will snatch you out of my father's hand. And it, it, it's the picture of security. And you, if you have a young child, uh, maybe you're walking down the street or in a park with your child hand in hand. Someone tries to snatch that child out of your hand. You're not going to let that happen at all. You're going to protect the child. Uh, that's Jesus' metaphor. We are secure in our, in our father's hands, in his father's hands. We're secure. No one's going to snatch us out. Secure, yes, not because I'm strong, but because God is so strong and loving and I'm in his family. And so this passage as well today, God is for us. And we see how much God is for us by him saying nothing will separate us from the love of God who is, that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing. And then he goes through a long list. Well, let me just read it with the idea that God is for us. We're in. Nothing's going to separate us from God's love. If God, what shall we say of these things? Romans 8, 31. What should we say about all this stuff? And here's his conclusion, what we should say. If God is for us, there's our theme for the week. If God is for us, who can be against us? Oh, there's going to be a lot in this world that's against us. People and circumstances and disease and life. If, but if God is for us, the most powerful, the most loving, the most uh, sovereign of all the universe, if God is for us, then who can be against us? Don't worry about it. He didn't spare his own son, but gave him up for us. How will he not also graciously give us all things? He gave us his son. He's going to give us everything else we need to get through things. Then he asks some questions. I'll just walk through them quickly. Who will bring any charge against God's elect? Who's going to bring a charge against you and say, you're guilty? It is God who justifies. To justify means to declare righteous. God's already declared you righteous in Christ. Any charge, it's out of here. Who is to condemn? Who's going to condemn you? Well, then he says, well, Christ Jesus is the one who died for you. Um, Christ was condemned in your place. So if, if you're feeling condemned, Christ was already condemned for you. And then he says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And then he goes through this long list. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? He continues, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Not because we're so strong, but because of God's purposes and God is for us. So none of those horrible things will be for us. And now he's going to go on a much grander list of things uh, to say, can any of these things separate us? And finally, he's going to run out of ideas or run out of ink because he's going to throw it all into one idea and say, or anything else I can think of. Well, here's what he says. I am sure that neither death nor life, 
angels or rulers, things present or things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. I'm out of ideas. Anything else in all creation. None of those will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. God is so for you that nothing will ever separate you from his love. Sit in that for a moment. Sit in that all day. God is for you. God is so for you. And you see it in Christ and what he's done for you. That ends our week in Romans chapter 8. I know it's Thursday. I invite you to come tomorrow. Um, same channel. and um, But look for a fresh take. Mark and I will be doing this show every Friday, longer, 20 to 30 minutes. Tomorrow will just be five, sort of a preview. 20 to 30 minutes. We will, we will be doing similar things. We'll be looking at the scripture and we'll be applying them to issues of our lives, issues of today, every Friday, starting next week. So go tomorrow and see the five-minute preview. And then starting next week, we'll continue Take 5, but it'll be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay? Tuesday, Thursday, Take 5. Friday, a fresh take. It's really good to fellowship with you this way. If you enjoy this, let me know. And, um, and remember this, and we're done. God is for you. I'll see you.